Is it possible for an egg to fall from near space and survive? A former NASA engineer became a YouTube sensation when he documented his attempts to send an egg up and then test if it would crack upon landing. Join us in this video as we examine this more closely and also look at the strangest experiments humans have ever performed in space. First up, the story of an egg. Mark Rober is a former NASA engineer but is now a YouTuber. He asked himself this question, could an egg survive landing on a mattress if it fell from high up in the stratosphere? Sphere. Okay, so this may be the kind of question many of us ask ourselves in our more boring moments, but few of us would dream of acting upon the thought. Yet that's exactly what Rober did, and he created a viral sensation when he started doing short video documentaries of his efforts. With the aid of a former NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory personnel, the experiment was fine-tuned. Basically, an egg would be held by a modified tip of a vehicle shaped like a rocket. Then it would be transported to an altitude of more than 100,000 feet and suspended there by a high-altitude balloon. This is around 19 miles up in the air. In the final stage of the experiment, it would be dropped. Now, the rocket the egg is attached to has fins to help with guidance and these would assist in targeting the mattress on terra firma. Once the rocket was sure the egg was locked onto the mattress target, the egg would be released and allowed to free fall from around 300 feet up. Sounds simple enough, right? But it wasn't. It took three years. Those three years were a mega odyssey of dumb failures, lost helium, and silly voices, and scrub launches, and much, much more. Boredom often leads to magnificent breakthroughs. But you be the judge. We're going to tell you about the most outrageous experiments human beings have conducted in space in just a moment. Keep watching now how the ultimate phone a friend became the recipe for success. These early failures in Rober's Odyssey led to the ultimate phone a friend. He called on a good buddy, Adam Steltzner. Yep, this is the guy you saw when NASA landed Curiosity on Mars. When Curiosity touched down in 2012, it marked the debut of the rocket-powered sky crane landing system. This NASA technology also managed to get the Perseverance rover safely back in early 2021. So with those levels of experience at hand, things could only go better. The experiment was a success, and the 27-minute video rover made to document the whole extravaganza has already garnered more than 21 million views since November 25th. Okay, so what are the strangest experiments humans have done in space? We may have a handle on the way things behave in microgravity. But bear in mind, we've been going into space for more than 50 years. Before that, we had no idea whatsoever. Let's take fire, for instance. Or what about planarian worms or plants? Experimentation in situ is the only way we could get answers to these and other burning questions. And sometimes these experiments were pretty darn fascinating. At other times, they were upsetting. And mostly, they were downright wacky. Take the spacesuit Ivan Ivanovich or Mr. Smith as an example. And yes, this was the name of a spacesuit, not an astronaut. Anyway, this spacesuit was stuffed with a whole bunch of old clothes. And we know, you're asking what special kind of idiot takes old clothes into space. But it also had a radio transmitter fitted inside. The idea was to see if old spacesuits could actually be used as satellites. The official designation of this outer space scarecrow was AMSAT Oscar 54, and it was deployed in February 2006. It floated away from the International Space Station, untethered into the yawning, vast emptiness of space. That in itself is a scary image. This experiment was neither a total success nor an abysmal failure. It slotted somewhere in between. NASA said the transmitter died not long after Mr. Smith's release. The Ruskies, however, claimed they picked up a final transmission around 14 days later. The empty suit spent a couple of months in silent orbit and then slipped back into the Earth's atmosphere and burned up in September 2006. Imagine placing effervescent tablets in a blob of water in zero gravity. Keep watching to find out more. Then, the feather and the hammer. Galileo Galilei dropped two unequal spheres from the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy in the late 16th century. Both arrived on the ground at exactly the same time. With that experiment, he'd successfully countered the views of the time by showing that gravitational acceleration had absolutely no no bearing on the mass of an object. Things fall at the same rate, even a hammer and a feather, as unlikely as this seems. Now, this is a tricky experiment to perform on Earth, mostly because of air resistance. But around four centuries later, an astronaut stood on the moon and repeated the experiment. In 1971, the 2nd of August to be precise, Apollo 15's commander David Scott held a feather in one hand 
and a geological hammer in the other. He raised his arms to around 1.6 meters off the lunar surface and dropped them. The atmosphere on the moon is pretty much a vacuum, so there's no air resistance. And voila, the two objects fell in absolute sync. And in case you were wondering, both the feather and the hammer are still up there. Also, how about a fizzy tablet inside a water blob? If you squirt water from a nozzle in microgravity, it just hangs there. It blobs and wobbles. This whole experiment sounds like a whole bunch of fun. For instance, when a plane simulates zero gravity by doing parabolic flights, it is called a vomit comet. Astronauts have popped water balloons in these circumstances to see what it does. Come on, we all want to do that now, right? On the ISS, astronauts have also attached a water blob with a bubble inside to a loudspeaker. This was to observe vibrations. And best of all, they put a GoPro camera inside a water blob to get a different perspective. It doesn't end there, though. Scott Kelly, an astronaut, changed the color of water with food coloring. He inserted effervescent tablets into the blob and watched them as they dissolved and released gases into the H2O. The ISS has a new 4K camera and this was used to film the whole thing. A tortoise may be slow, but a few lucky members of the species have flown around the moon. Watch until the end to see what happened. Now, what happens to fire in space? Water behaves differently in microgravity. We know this now, but so does fire. In 1997, there was a fire on board the Mir space station, but that hasn't happened since then, thank heavens. It is important to understand how fire behaves when gravity is all but absent, because that helps with safety planning for longer missions like taking astronauts to Mars. Mars. And believe it or not, it also assists in informing safety protocols on Earth. To that end, research projects have looked at how flames behave in space. On the ISS, the burning and suppression of solids experiments investigated the burning characteristics of a broad range of fuels in microgravity. These experiments gathered enough data to build complex models that help to understand the finer details of combustion, even within Earth's gravity. Another of the mind-bending experiments involves space spiders, of all things. Can spiders actually adapt to space travel? That was the premise. Why, do you ask? We have no idea. Maybe that was boredom, too. Nevertheless, two golden silk orb weaver spiders were sent up to the ISS for a 45-day sojourn. They were called Gladys and Esmeralda. Their prepared habitat was more than nice, probably to keep these arachnids from getting loose on the space station, just imagine. And the light conditions were set to simulate an Earth day and night cycle. Temperature and humidity were controlled, and a hamper of juicy fruit flies made up their space diet. Gladys and Esmeralda adapted beautifully. They spun the first known spider webs in outer space and then did what orb weavers do. At the end of the day, they ate their homes just to spin them again the next morning. They continued to live their lives right on schedule as if they'd been traveling into orbit all their lives. But that's not all, folks. Tortoises, too. Before humans made it to the moon back in the 60s, nobody knew how getting close and personal with the moon would affect life forms. So the Russians decided to start with tortoises. They sent two up for a round trip around the moon in 1968. But the tortoises weren't alone. The capsule was a veritable ark that included wine flies, mealworms, plants, seeds, bacteria, and algae. The two shelled cosmonauts traveled on board the Zon five spacecraft. And from this point on, they weren't fed anymore. They finally returned to Moscow on the 7th of October of the same year. Their journey consisted of seven days of space flight, and then another couple of days bobbing around in a tropical ocean while they waited to be retrieved upon their return. So they spent 39 days without food altogether. And on that note, we're ending this video. Thanks for staying with us. Remember to tap the follow and like buttons, and look out for our next contribution. See you in the next one.